welcome back everyone uh, in this lecture uh, we will talk about uh, cyclic groups and uh, i will try to give various characterization of cyclic groups so so let's start with the definition a group uh, g is said to be cyclic if there exist an element x in g such that g is generated by that element okay so we have seen some examples of cyclic groups so so let's recall what are those examples for example if we take z plus it is a cyclic group and it is generated by 1 and minus 1 okay so if we take z modulo n z so then we have seen that this is again generated by 1 plus n z okay so we can also take what is called this nth roots of unity okay so which we denoted by un so this is those x in c such that x power n is identity okay so this this form a group with respect to multiplication because if x and y are in un you can see that x y power n will be exactly equal to x power n into y power n so that will be one okay and inverse will be there and uh, so that is enough to say that un is a group okay it is a subgroup of c star in particularly so then you can see that this is actually generated by this what is called primitive nth root of unity so e power 2 pi i divided by n okay so this things you must have seen already so now uh, what we are going to say indeed so these first two examples they are very very important so all cyclic groups must be of this form okay so what is the meaning of that for that uh, so we need to define the notion of isomorphism okay so basically what we want to say any cyclic group is either isomorphic to z plus or z mod n z okay so so what is isomorphism so isomorphism is that it is like you have defined two algebraic objects okay namely groups so if you take two groups whether they are identical or not so that is what we want to actually see for example so let's start with uh, z and then 2z okay so uh, as a group you are not getting anything new from these two na so because as a set they are even though they are different you can see some similarities are there immediately for example i can think of integer as n or 2n it doesn't matter so whenever i add n and m you are adding 2n and 2n okay it's the same way, way you are adding so that means this n goes to 2n it defines a map and that map preserves group loss for example if you call this map is phi then phi of n plus m is same as 2 times n plus m so which is 2n plus 2m so which is same as phi of n plus phi of m and not only that this phi is easily to see it is a bijective map okay this phi is bijective map okay so in this case we we are actually uh, okay to define this z and 2z as groups they are not indeed different they are same okay so that is what we call it isomorphism between groups so a bijective map satisfying this property phi of xy equal to phi of x phi of y is called isomorphism between two groups so let me define so let us say we have given two groups g and j dash and a map from uh, g to j dash okay and this phi is said to be isomorphism if first condition is phi is bijective and the second condition is phi satisfies or 
phi preserves the group loss. Phi of x y is same as phi x phi y for all x y and g. Okay. So, later actually I will uh, go into very much details in discussing this homomorphism between groups and so on. But uh, right now for our purpose it is uh, enough to define what is isomorphism. Okay. So, it is clear that so each element of G can be associated with some element of G dash and whatever product that you have G is reflected in a similar way in G dash okay? that is what this isomorphism actually tells you. So, as groups you do not see any difference between G and G dash. So, they look similar okay? for example, e z 2 z and then you can also see that uh, e z 4 e z they are similar and so on. Okay? So, now what uh, we are going to say, so we write uh, this uh, congruences relation okay, to say that, so they are isomorphic. So, if two groups are said to be isomorphic, if there exists one isomorphism at least between them. Okay? So, now uh, what we are going to prove, so we are going to prove that any cyclic group either isomorphic to EZ so, exactly it is isomorphic to z if it is infinite group and if it is finite group and order of that group is capital N then it is isomorphic to z modulo NH. So, basically up to isomorphism, so these are all the only two cyclic groups available. Okay, Let us see how to prove this. So, you start with an abstract group G which is cyclic. So, let G, so you assume that it is generated by X be cyclic. Okay. So, now there are two cases one is order of x is finite and order of x is infinite. Okay. But anyway once you are given g then you know that g looks like this. So, the element of g okay, it is identity x plus or minus 1, x plus or minus 2 and so on. Okay. So, let, let me write it uh, in both cases. So, this is uh, if order of x is infinite, so this is the very explicit when I when I write it like this I am saying that these are all distinct elements. So, then this is exactly x power n minus 1 if order of x is finite and you denote it by capital N. So, now what we do? We take these two cases and then define maps. Okay, In the first case, you can see that you can define a map from e z to g, call it phi and then you send m to x power m. And it is easy to check this map is uh, uh, satisfy the second property of isomorphism which is called group homomorphism. A map satisfying this property is called group homomorphism. It is easy to see this is a group homomorphism. And since these elements are all distinct, so, when R of x is infinite, so this map is indeed bijective map. Okay? So, that means this defines isomorphism. So, now in case 2, you have ez mod n ez and then you have this group G. So, now what you do? You take this i plus n ez and then send it to x power i. Okay? So, now since G has exactly n number of elements, so this map is bijective. Okay? So, the only thing that remains to prove is actually this map indeed homomorphism. So, let us try to prove that. So, let us take two element i plus n z and j plus n z from z mod n z. So, since we can fix one complete residual uh, class. Okay, the representatives. So, we can assume that this i and j they are coming from 1 to n minus 1. Okay? So, they are integers coming from 1 to n minus 1. So, now if you take phi of i plus n e z plus j plus n e z. So, then you can see that this is exactly equal to phi of i plus j plus n e z. Okay? So, then this is exactly equal to 
x power i plus j. The thing is we also need to check this map is well defined okay. So that is something easy to check so that I will leave it okay maybe I will do it here in the side. So if you so what one what can happen this i plus n z can be equal to i dash plus n z for some other i dash okay this is something we have seen already. So we can choose different different representatives for this cosets. So in particularly if you look at i minus i dash this has to be some multiple of n. So in particularly if you raise it power x with that x power i minus i dash then it is exactly equal to x power k n then it is identity. So this would imply that x power i is equal to x power i dash. So here you can assume without loss of generality i greater than or equal to i dash okay. So this simple calculation says that this map that you have defined from z mod n z to g i goes to i plus n z goes to x power i is actually a well defined map. So now it is bijective that is fine because once you have def uh, verified it is well defined then it is easy to see both have same cardinality and uh, so and phi is on to so it is actually bijection. So now uh, we need to verify it is uh, group homomorphism for that purpose if you compute uh, the image of this i plus j so then you can see this is x power i plus j so then this can be written as x power i into x power j. So then this is nothing but phi of i plus n z times phi of j plus n z. It is exactly the similar calculation that you do for integers okay. So that is what you are doing here. So this proves phi is indeed isomorphism okay. So in particularly what we have proved we proved that so we can call this as theorem. So there are two groups okay like two family of groups in some sense of cyclic groups. One is z plus that has single uh, element of infinite cyclic group and all other finite cyclic groups will look like they look like uh, z modulo n h. Okay. So this is uh, indeed helps helps us to understand uh, the the set uh, the isomorphism classes of cyclic groups but anyway it doesn't say that uh, okay determining some group is cyclic or not okay that problem is actually somewhat difficult problem okay so what is the difficult problem so even though cyclic groups look somewhat very simple either they are isomorphic to z plus or z modulo n z but if if you if some group is given okay then if we ask this question when whether it is cyclic or not okay so that question is somewhat harder to answer okay we will see some examples later uh, coming from number theory okay but anyway we will try to understand other uh, properties of this cyclic groups now okay. So now here is one of the important uh, property so let us call it proportion. If you take any subgroup okay of cyclic group that must be cyclic. So we have seen that already for integers if you take z plus so we have seen what are all the subgroups of z plus if h is a subgroup then we have seen that h must be of the form d z okay for some d in d integer. So but it is easy to that uh, easy to see that uh, d z is again cyclic it is generated by d okay. But this same thing happens for z modulo n z as well. So that is what this proportion says any okay any subgroup of a cyclic group is cyclic. Okay. So how do we prove that okay let us prove it abstractly so that we do not need to deal with individual cases. So start with g assume it is generated by x okay and start with h which is a subgroup so h is a subgroup. 
So, now some powers of x must be there in h ok. H could be just identity in that case we there is nothing to prove ok it is already cyclic ok. So, assume that there exists some non trivial power of x in h. So, there is x power m in h. So, for some m integer which is non zero ok. But the thing is this m you can assume to be positive because you by replacing x by x inverse you can see that uh, it still generates g ok. So, this is something I will leave it as exercise. So, if g is generated by x then definitely x inverse also generates g. So, now by replacing x by x inverse I can assume m is uh, positive. So, then I can choose d to be the minimum of such m. So, m in n such that x power m is in h. So, I can choose the minimum uh, d such like this. So, then we claim that this h must be generated by this x power d. So, if you think about it this is this is what we did even for integers. So, you start with a subgroup h if it is trivial then there is nothing to prove. If it is non trivial we proved that it will have non, non trivial intersection with positive integers then you take the smallest positive integer that lies there and then we proved that actually generates. So, here we are taking that uh, exponential of x instead of that positive integer. So, it is obvious that x power d is in h implies the subgroup generated by this is contained in h. So, there is nothing to see here, but we need to prove the other way. You start with some y in h. So, we need to say that this y must be uh, some power of x power d. So, since y is in g, so that will imply y equal to some x power d dash for some d for some d dash in integers. So, now you have d and d dash you want to say that this d dash is multiple of d basically you want to say y is power of x power d. So, in order to say that you can just simply say d dash is multiple of d. So, now to do that again we have to go back to the division algorithm nothing else you take d dash equal to some k times d plus some r where r will be smaller than d ok. Now, you can actually uh, do the computation you can see that x power d dash is same as x power d power k times x power r. Now, note that this element is y is inside h and this element is in inside h because x power d is inside h. So, any power of x power d is inside h. So, that means if you take this y times the inverse of this element which is x power r ok. So, x power r is y times x power d k inverse. So, this must be in h because both these elements are in h. So, that says x power r is inside h. But what is the property of r? r is smaller than d, but we have collected d such that it is the minimum among all such power positive powers of x such that x power m is h. So, that forces that r cannot be non zero. So, that means r must be 0. If r is 0 that implies d dash is multiple of d that implies y is x power d dash equal to x power d power k. Okay, which is in subgroup generated by x power d. So, that proves h is subgroup generated by x power d. Okay. So, indeed in one stroke we proved any subgroup of a cyclic group either z or z modulo n z that will be cyclic. So, this is the abstraction that we need to appreciate it is the same proof that what we did for z okay, by looking at uh, the abstraction ok the, the things that we used in that proof that actually helps us to do this proof for any cyclic group. Of course, uh, that means we have done it for 
ఈజ్ మోడ్లో ఎన్ ఈజ్ ఫర్ ఆల్ ఎన్ ఇన్ వన్ గో ఓకే అండ్ ఈజ్ ఎస్ ఫుల్ ఓకే సో వీ విల్ సి వాట్ ఎల్స్ వీ కెన్ సే అబౌట్ ద సబ్ గ్రూప్స్ ఆఫ్ సైక్లిక్ గ్రూప్స్ ఓకే so we have already seen something about the infinite group so the infinite group is being uh, isomorphic to z plus you can see that uh, okay if order of g is infinite and g is generated by x so then uh, you can see that g is isomorphic to uh, z okay in particularly given any d integer you can look at x power d okay so sub group generated by x power d so that will be a sub group of g okay so then x power d sub group generated by this x power d is there inside g and this is uh, somewhat isomorphic to d chat okay so this is somewhat unique association so re- let's recall what we have done in z so e z if you take then the subgroups of z looks like d z so by replacing a d by minus d we can assume d is positive okay so either d is zero or d is positive that we can assume okay so d greater than or equal to zero so then it is not hard to see so this association okay these are all distinct subgroups of z okay because if you take d z is same as d dash z and both d d dash are greater than or equal to zero so then what happens d divides d dash because d dash is in d z so d dash must be multiple of d and for the same reason d dash divides d okay but both are non negative so that would imply that d must be equal to d dash so in particularly the subgroups of z they are indexed by dz and all of them are distinct okay so so this is the these are all the subgroups and these are all distinct subgroups of integers so that's what you expect to happen even in g okay inside because it's a infinite group it is isomorphic to z then i will leave it to you to check for given d non negative integer you have a unique subgroup of subgroup uh, which is generated by x power d okay so that gives you one to one correspondence so now what happens if you take finite okay finite actually somewhat becomes more interesting so if you take g which is uh, finite and assume g is also cyclic so maybe we can assume order of x equal to n okay so then uh, given okay d which divides n okay again you can assume d is uh, non negative integer so d from z plus such that d divides n so that mean you can take it to be positive integer not a problem given d positive integer okay suppose d divides n then you can see that you can take this x power n divided by d okay we already seen that the order of x power n by d is nothing but d okay the order of x power d so recall what was the order of uh, some power it is uh, order of x divided by gcd of order of x comma that power so here exactly the order of x divided by gcd of uh, order of x comma that power since d divides n so n by d also divides n so that that tells you that that the order of x power n by d must be exactly equal to n divided by n by d which is d okay so given any divisor positive divisor of n you have a subgroup of order d okay so now we will claim that this subgroup must be unique okay there exists unique subgroup of order d and then 
the uniqueness will come from that uh, it is actually generated by n by d. Okay. So, then we will also conversely we say that these are all the only subgroups. Okay. So, so what we proved here let me just state it when you have g cyclic and order of g is infinite the subgroups of g has one to one correspondence with the non negative integers. Okay. The correspondence is given by d goes to x power d subgroup generated by x power d. So, such correspondence we want to establish for finite group. So, you take a cyclic group which has order n. So, then what we want to say? So, we want to say the subgroups of, of g. So, g is cyclic order of g is let us say n g generated by x. So, this has again one to one correspondence with those devices which are natural numbers d divides d divides n okay, where the correspondence is given by d goes to subgroup generated by n by d. Okay. So, now you can see that when d is 1 then it is just x power when d is 1 then this is x power n. So, the subgroup generated by x power n is just identity. Okay. When d is n then this corresponds to subgroup generated by x which is g. So, it is sandwiched between identity and g and then you cover all the subgroups. Okay. So, now uh, we have already established this map okay, d goes to x power n by d. So, we are defining the map the other way and it is well defined because d equal to d dash will imply the subgroup generated by this x power n by d is same as x power n by d dash okay, that is fine. And uh, we need to prove it is actually bijective correspondence. So, we have to prove it is injective as well as surjective. So, let us look at injective. Okay. So, take two subgroups. So, we will we'll start with the subgroup let us say h is from g such that order of h is t. Okay. So, definitely this h is generated by some x power a. So, we just saw from this uh, earlier theorem that any subgroup of a cyclic group must be cyclic and we also picked one particular generator. Okay. So, where is that theorem? Yeah. So, we also picked a very particular power of that x such that that x power of that uh, generates this subgroup. Okay, in particularly, the subgroup that we started with this h must be generated by some x power, which we call it x power a. Okay. So, now we want to show that this a must be n divided by d. We know that order of x power a is exactly order of x divided by gcd between order of x comma a. Okay. But this is by definition since order of h is d, so this has to be d. Okay. So, now you can see that so, so now what you can say about uh, this a. So, this g c d of order of x comma a will become equal to order of x divided by d. Okay. So, now uh, you can see that okay, 
this x power d a is identity. So, order of x divides d a. So, now if you take uh, yeah divided by the g c d then uh, okay. So, yeah. So, order of x. So, it is a similar argument that we did before g c d of order of x. Uh, now, you can take it to be order of x comma d. So, which will divide a d a divided by g c d order of x comma d. But these two numbers will become relatively prime that will imply that order of x divided by g c d of order of x comma d divides a. Okay. But already what is given? Given is d already divides order of x. So, that is how we started with now because the d is all those n such that d divides n. So, that means this number is nothing but order of x divided by d. Okay. Okay, that is immediate from here. So, this n by d divides a. Okay. So, now what is a? If you recall a is the smallest power such that x power a is inside h. So, you already have this uh, uh, okay. So, let us uh, okay. So, let me write it here. So, you have n by d divides a. Okay. So, now if you take this x power n by d subgroup generated by this. Since this a is multiple of n by d, so then this must contain x power a. Okay. So, now you can see that this x power a is contained in this subgroup. So, that forces that this subgroup generated by the x power n by d must contain h, but what is the order of h? Order of h is d. So, this forces that this has order d and this has order d. So, that forces that h must be equal to the subgroup generated by n by d. Okay. So, this proves that if h is another group which has order d then that must coincide with this. So, that proves that this map is injective. Okay. So, this is injective map. Now, by definition this is uh, on to because given d you have a subgroup. So, that proves that this is actually a bijective correspondence. Okay. So, this is actually kind of uh, tells you one more information. If, if you have a natural number d, if that does not divide n, then, then the subgroup of order d inside g must be the number of subgroups which has order d inside g must be 0. Okay. There are no subgroups. So, basically we have established a bijection between these things. Okay. And uh, this kind of classifies all possible subgroups. So, this is something you can apply to eject mod n eject, and then immediately you can see that uh, what will be the corollary. Okay. Suppose if I take eject modulo n eject, okay, for example, take n equal to 4, okay. And the what are all the subgroups? You can see that. So, first of all the subgroups corresponds to those devices of 4. So, d equal to 1, 2 and 4 you have subgroup and, uh, and if you take this 1 plus n e z, so that is the generator. Then for d equal to 1, okay, for given d you have to take n by d. So, that is the subgroup generated by this. But if you think about it, so we are if you write it in the exponential addition, you are basically adding this 1 plus n is at n by d times. So, that means 
the subgroup here is just n by d corresponds to the coset n by d n z okay so in particularly in this case you have basically 1 plus n z so this is one group and then when it is 2 then it is 2 plus n z and when it is 4 it is uh, yeah 4 by 4 okay this is maybe I should write like this 4 here 2 and then 1 plus n h but 4 plus n h is same as 0 plus n h so this is just identity and this has two elements 2 plus n z and n z and this is exactly z modulo 4 z so these are all the subgroups of z modulo 4 z and for general case so given d d device n you have exactly the subgroup generated by n by d plus n z will have order d okay so with this i will uh, stop here and uh, in the next class uh, we will uh, continue with the characterization of cyclic groups some more properties of cyclic groups